Hey everyone, my name is Jessie Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid and welcome to our weekly paint night live where we teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. Tonight I'm going to be showing you how to paint this cute back to school clipboard. So normally we do canvas paintings um, for these sessions but tonight I thought it'd be fun to do something a little bit different since it's kind of that time of year. I know a lot of the country um, is already back to school and some of you are still getting ready but this project makes a great teacher gift. If you are a teacher it's perfect to paint for your classroom. If you're starting college it's really fun to have with you and personalize so there's lots of different ways you can use this clipboard this time of year and I thought it'd be really fun to show you how to paint it. Uh, we also have Dylan Estes in the studio here moderating so if you have any questions or comments please make sure to pop those in the chat and he'll relay them to me so I can answer them. Hey Dylan. Hey. <laughs> um, as always the supplies we'll be using tonight is our Let's Paint Live kit. So our Let's Paint Live kit comes with 24 folk art matte acrylic colors and you can see the wide range of colors we have here. There's pretty much everything you could possibly need. And with this kit, you could paint every one of our paint nights and our Let's Paint Lives that we have monthly. So make sure to check this kit out on platonline.com um, because, again, you can go back and watch any of those videos and paint along. So it's a really great value. It also comes with our 10-piece folk art variety brush set. Um, and I've just got three brushes that are from that set here. These are just three um, medium to small size flat brushes. That's all we'll need for this um, painting tonight. Of course, I've got my clipboard, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of an upcycling tonight. This is a clipboard that I use all the time, but I'm going to spruce it up using some of our folk art paints. And then as an addition to our supplies tonight, I have some, one of our new products here, and this is our Apple Barrel Paint Pens. So I personally love a paint pen, so I was so excited when I found out that Plaid was going to be making our own line under the Apple Barrel brand. So these are multi-surface, they're non-toxic, they're not smelly, but as you can see here, they work really great, they have awesome coverage. So we're gonna be using these to do a little bit of a doodle design when we're done with our painting. I've also got my palette paper, um, some paper towels, my water here to clean my brushes, and then I also have a um, hair dryer. So I'll be using this to just dry some of the layers to make sure that we can keep our painting within an hour. So, unless you have any questions about the supplies, Dylan. I think we're ready to get started. Awesome. I'll let you guys know really quick, just in case you don't have the Let's Paint Live kit, um, what specific colors we'll be using. We've got French blue, which is this like light blue color. We've got uh, licorice or pure black. Any of our blacks will work. Wicker white. Again, any white's fine. And then we've also got true blue, which is like a pretty medium, like bright blue color, and that's these back flowers here. So um, I've also grabbed out of my Apple Barrel Basics set, um, we have two sets of our Apple Barrel paint pens, the Basics and then also Neons. These three colors, the um, blue, black, and white, are from our Basics set. So that's the set I'm using tonight. And you can see I've kind of got a coordinating palette going on here. So let's go ahead and get started by base coating our clipboard. I'm gonna grab some of my black. And just like I said, it's, we're gonna grab the largest brush we have um, just to make it a little bit quicker. And we're just going to base coat that background. We've got some people joining us. One um, is excited that we're doing a clipboard. They hadn't thought about that. Before. Cool, yeah. These are actually super fun to paint on, especially this, like, um, what is this material? MDF? MDF. I guess it's yeah. like an MDF and it's sort of. polished, so it goes on really nice. Yeah, they absolutely take paint beautifully. You're going to see tonight, it's like one coat and done, which generally is the case for our folk art paints because they have such great coverage. But these especially, um, tonight our painting, it's going to be just like so quick and easy because this material actually, I, I don't think it would ever have occurred to me to paint on it just for like a regular painting, um, but it takes our paint so, so, so nicely. So it was actually really fun and satisfying to paint on this. I'm just gonna get my paint nice and smooth. You can go under the clip too. Um, if you have like a clamp, you can even clamp that at home that's something you've got around but I just kind of use my hand and paint underneath it or you can tape it off kind of whatever works easier for you just so we can make sure we get paint under there as well just making sure I get paint everywhere that you'll be able to see that brown background I want it to be covered You can see I'm just dipping my brush in the water every once in a while because um, the MDF is really easy to paint on, but it's also super absorbent. 
So as I'm painting, my brush is drying out really quickly because um, the material is just really soaking that paint up. So I'm just dipping my brush in a little bit of water. I'm not watering down my paint at all because you don't want to um, get too much moisture into the MDF, but just enough so that my brush isn't like really dragging when I'm trying to get uh, my paint across. You definitely don't want to put too much water, like I said, in your paint though, because this will um, really buckle and bend if you get it really, really, really wet. So we want to avoid that. Just enough to coat that surface nice and smoothly and evenly. And these are so great to make for teacher gifts because you can get these for like 50 cents at um, the office supply store. But you can see I've even had this one laying around my desk. I've got plenty that I can kind of um, spruce up a little bit. So if you're making teacher gifts or um, just back to school gifts in general, college gifts for um, you know people who are starting college, this is a great thing to give. I know graduation is in the past, but just a really great thing for this time of year um, and really easy to do and really inexpensive and kind of thoughtful once you personalize it, so. Okay, you can see how covered it is. We're definitely gonna need one coat and a lot of it's even already dry, so really, really great surface to work on. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna rinse my brush off and then I am just gonna dry it with my hair dryer real quick just so we can move along to the flowers. Go ahead and start my hair dryer. Right, it's already dry, so perfect canvas to work on. Um, okay, now we can start our flowers. So you can see here for these sort little doodle flowers that I made, um, I did lots of layering. So I started with these sort of royal blue flowers in the back, and then the next one um, closest to us are these light blue flowers, and then the closest thing to us is the white um, leaves I did here, the little sprigs. So that said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our true blue. And we're gonna make these big, loose, circular flowers first. So I have another small flat brush. This is a number 12 flat. I'm gonna pick up some paint. And like I said, I'm gonna try to keep it in a circle. Um, and we're gonna keep in mind where all of our flowers are gonna be arranged as we're going. So I'm gonna start with one here. You can start by painting a circle if that's easier for you. And don't worry about it being perfect because we're gonna make it a little bit wonky on purpose. So we get that kind of flowery shape. So I'll just make a circle so I can kind of, you know, know my placement, go right up to the edge. That looks good to me. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make these edges a little bit irregular by making some sort of waves in them. Just like that. And then we're going to leave that just as a flat shape, kind of just block that color in. And we go back with our paint pens later. That's when we're going to add the details. So I'm going to do another one of these, maybe down here. And I'm just kind of going right into the wave, the wavy edge, and then filling it in. And again, you can see how great our folk art coverage is on these paints because a lot of times when you paint onto black like this, you gotta do several coats, but not with folk art. You can see just one coat and that's gonna be good to go. Do another one up here. And you can vary the size of these if you want to. I'm kind of making them all the same size because I like the way that looks, but it's totally up to you. 
you can change the colors of this. Um, I did this particular color scheme because I um, these are the, my older sister is a teacher and these are her school colors. So um, blue and black are the school colors. That's why I made this. But you can you know personalize this to be your school's colors or you know the school um, of the person who you're gifting this to's colors. So lots of great ways to personalize this, not just the name at the end. How's everybody doing out there, Dill? They're excited to be painting with us. Awesome. We have a lot of our um, regulars, but it looks like we have some new people. Awesome. So we welcome you guys. We host this Monday night paint night every Monday night. Mm-hmm. Sure do. We've got a teacher in New York. Okay. That loves this idea. Awesome. Thanks for the idea. Thanks for teaching. We got someone in Sydney, Australia. Oh, welcome, very cool. It's great to have you here. Yeah, all right. So I think that's good for my um, true blue flowers. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. And we are gonna go ahead and dry this with our hair dryer again uh, before we move on to the next flower so that we don't you know, mix those colors. Cause like I said, we're gonna be doing lots of overlapping to get this really pretty design. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So that's pretty dry. I'm happy with that. <clears throat> so now we're going to do these um, light blue flowers with the long petals. So for this one, we're going to be using French blue. I'm going to put some of that on my palette. And again, just a small to medium sized flat brush. I think I'm going back with the number 12 here. So for this one, we're going to start by painting um, something of a star shape. Um, and we're also gonna keep in mind, as far as placement, that we do wanna have it overlapping some of the flowers we've already painted. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna find somewhere where I'm gonna say my center is gonna be here, make a little mark so I know where my flower is gonna be. And then I'm gonna paint a line for the top petal. And then kind of going out, I'm gonna do five petals on each. You can do six if you want to, it's totally up to you. I'm just painting the lines here so I know where my flower is going to be sitting. You can make your petals as long or as short as you want. Make them a little longer, I think, actually. And now I know where my flower is going to be. I'm going to use the width of my flat brush to sort of just widen those. And I want my flower petals to be wider at the ends and then go in and be more narrow towards the center. So I'm just using my flat brush to widen that. You see how I did that there? Super easy to do. Start at the end and go left and then get narrower, go right, get narrower. And again, we're going to just block these big shapes in and then we'll go back at the end and add in the details with our apple barrel paint pens. Okay, so I'm gonna continue making these flowers. And again, keeping in mind that I do want it to overlap a little with my already existing flower shapes. And I'm just kind of, if you saw there, I just kind of am balancing my uh, hand with my pinky so that I don't shake and wobble. I just kind of use that as a rest. Since this is dry, I don't have to worry about smearing it. So that way I can make my lines nice and straight. I'm using that as sort of a rest for my hand to keep it steady. We got Sherry painting along with us. Hey, Sherry, welcome. Can't wait to see it. 
We're just keeping it really loose and really bold for now. You don't have to worry about them making them perfect. And again, since we're using our folk art paints, um, we don't need to worry about doing multiple coats. Just this one coat, even on this dark background, and um, it's gonna be full coverage, which is really, really nice when you're painting. You don't wanna have to worry about going back and doing multiple coats. Maybe just one kind of peeking in off the edge, not a full flower, but just some of the petals peeking in to kind of add a pop of light blue to this bottom corner. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush off. And then we are going to go ahead and dry this layer. set of um, basic shapes we're doing for our big, you know, where we're laying out these uh, bold colors is going to be these white sprigs of leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and put some wicker white on my palette. And I'm going to use the smallest of my flat brushes I have. I have a number eight flat here. That's what I'm going to use for this. And I'm going to start by just using the um, chiseled edge of my brush to sort of map out where I want these sprigs to be. And this is the time we're gonna start filling in some gaps. So if you have any gaps, now's the time you wanna start kind of covering them up because this is the last shape we're gonna be adding. So I'm gonna grab some white and I'm just gonna use a little bit of paint at first because I wanna keep that nice sharp chiseled edge. So I kind of am loading it on one side and then flipping my brush and loading the other because I wanna keep it nice and um, like I said, nice and sharp there so I can get a nice fine line. So I'm gonna do a sprig coming Right here, this is a good spot because I have a big blank area. I'm just gonna do my stem. And then I'm just going to do basic leaf shapes using the exact same technique. I'm just gonna kind of draw them out using the chiseled edge of my brush. I'm gonna do one leaf on the end, just kind of that classic leaf shape, like a football almost. And then I'm gonna do mirrored leaves going down either side. And keep in mind, you can overlap the flowers you already have. It doesn't have to be an open space. 
So if I get close to a flower, I am going to overlap it. I'm going to keep sort of laying these out where I want them to be. So let's do one kind of coming down up here, right across that blue flower. I'm going to do my leaf on the end. And then I'm going to map it. And you can use a liner brush too if that's easier for you, um, or even a paint pen really if you want. And then go back and um, fill it in with your folk art paints. You can definitely do that. And then maybe I'll do one coming in. Hmm. You right here. Don't forget, overlapping is a good thing for this painting. I'm going to get that nice layered effect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the same brush and I'm just gonna carefully fill in those white leaves. So we have our white sprigs to add our paint pen in later. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry this off with my hair dryer. pretty dry already. Okay, so the last big area of color we're going to add in is our banner shape here. Um, and and it, you don't have to do any geometry for this banner shape. It's actually very simple to make. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, so you can, you can tape off your box if you want to, or you can freehand it. So I'm going to go ahead and freehand it. So I'm going to grab the largest of my flat brushes, which is my number 12 flat here. And I'm going to grab some white. And I'm going to kind of map it out. If you've painted with me before, you know I like to kind of map out where things are going to be before I just put um, brush to project. So I'm going to be about an inch from the left here, and I'm going to do an inch and a half um, high, this line. We're just doing this line right here. I'm going to map that out, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to mirror it. And again, you can use your paint pen if that helps you for this part too. 
And then I'm going to connect those as straight as I can. And then connect around the bottom as well. And then I'm going to fill that in. I might do two coats for this one. We'll see how it goes. Okay, before I paint the second coat, I'm going to do um, the edges of my little banner shape here. And to do that, I'm going to start on the left here. I'm going to go halfway down and make about a half an inch line going out. So halfway up and down there. And then about the same width below that as this one is, I'm going to do a matching line here. So they should be parallel to each other, just like that. There and there. And then the same thing on the other side again parallel lines. And then just a little inside this shape, I'm going to attach it. And the same on this side, I'm going to attach it. And then for this part, you can just do a straight line if you want, but I like to do this little like ribbon um, snipped edge. So just how it looks, we're just going to do a little V inside to connect those two. And then I'm going to fill this in with white as well. So it should look something like this. And I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this and then we're going to dry it. And I think I will do a second coat. Because you can see a little bit of the colors coming through that white. Dry it real quick. Dry. I'm going to go back with one more coat of white and just make sure that's really nice and opaque. Two coats will definitely do the job. Deborah said, you make it look so easy. Love the way you explain everything, very clear. Well, thank you, I'm glad. I'm glad it's easy to follow along. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush off. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer just so I don't smear it, but we're gonna do our paint pen on this one last just to give it a good few minutes to dry. And we're gonna add our paint pen to the rest of it first. But I am just gonna do a quick minute with the hairdryer.
okay. So I am gonna let that dry for a minute because when you're using your Apple Barrel paint pens um, on top of a painted surface like this, you wanna make sure your um, surface is really, really dry because these paint pens have um, a textured tip which makes them grip you know, your paper or surface really well if you're doing something slippery like um, glass or plastic or something like that but they will pull, drag up paint and kind of clog that tip and you'll have to clean it as you go. So you just wanna make sure that your surface is really, really dry before you start um, using your paint pens on them. So we're gonna start at the top where this is super nice and dry because it's been a few minutes. Um, oh, I just put water on it. And then we're gonna kind of work our way down to the bottom to make sure that's really dry before we start on it. So that said, I'm gonna start by adding the doodle patterns to our um, dark blue flowers, the first ones we did. And to do that, I'm gonna use my white paint pen. And whenever you're using Apple Barrel paint pens, you wanna shake it well, which is, this is really the case for most paint pens. You wanna shake it and then you want to depress the tip. And what I mean by that is just kind of press it down on you know, your spare surface, your palette or a, a napkin or something, and kind of make sure that that ink is flowing before you start using it on your surface. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one here. Um, I'm gonna make a little center here and I'm just gonna do sort of like little crinkle shapes. It almost reminds me of like a little ball of popcorn or something. Just little squiggles, kind of all going around each other. And that's the center. And then I'm going to make petal shapes that follow the outline of our um, irregular flower shape we made here. So I'm starting at the center. I'm gonna go to the outer edge and then following that line, I'm gonna make a petal shape. And then I'm gonna overlap each time I do it. So here I'm gonna go do one next to it. I'm gonna start at the center, I'm gonna overlap him. I'm gonna skip over that light blue because we kind of have to be wary of how we are overlapping. And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around, following the shape of my flower. And then here you kind of have to just make believe where that um, ends. I'm gonna do the same thing up here. A lot of it is um, your imagination because we kind of have them going off the edge here, but that's okay. And then you can add some textures too. Just some little scruffy lines. I'm gonna go down here and do the same thing. Make my center, little squiggly lines. Look like some texture. And then I'm gonna go up and add my petal shapes, overlapping each one. I just like the way that looks really. And if you feel like your paint pen is dragging, you may have hit wet paint, so you wanna make sure you get that paint off of your paint pen. Keep it nice and clean so it works for a long time. And then I've kinda of got some down here too, so I wanna make sure I get all of my dark blue flowers. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky because he's really hidden back there, but we'll make it work. I'll do my squiggles in the middle, and then my petal shapes. Again, really using our imagination for some of these. Just make it look like it is back there. And then I got one kind of peeking in down here too. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. All right, so that is it for our dark blue flowers. Now we're gonna do something very similar for our light blue flowers. And to do that, I'm going to use my blue paint pen. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna use my black paint pen. And again, I shook it. I've used these before, so um, I've already depressed the tips. But if you've not used your paint pens before, when you open them up, the tip is going to be white and you really need to wait a minute to get that ink flowing into the tip. Um, it comes without ink in the tip so that it doesn't dry out before you get it, which is great so you get that nice fresh paint pen with that ink flowing. But um, if it's your first time using your Apple Barrel paint pens, it will take a minute for the ink to start flowing. Okay, so for these ones, I'm gonna do something really similar, but it's a different shape, so it's gonna look a little different. I'm gonna start with my little popcorn ball texture in the center little squiggles, and then I'm going to kind of outline the petals here, but I'm just going almost to the edge, not all the way to the edge, you can see here. And then I'll do a couple little marks of texture on those, just to give it a little bit of detail. And I'm gonna do this for all of my light blue flowers too. Just like that, 
really simple. Go ahead and finish this for all of them. Again, make sure you go around shapes. You don't want to go over, other, bleh, over the other shapes around it. Okay. And then the last one um, we're gonna go over is our sprigs of leaves. So for these, I just, did the exact same technique, but I'm just kind of going to go back over um, and outline each of the leaves going almost to the edge, but not right up to the edge. This is some, one of my favorite patterns to do. I love doing these like doodle style flowers because it's just kind of mindless and you get a really pretty pattern when you're done. It's a great way to cover a surface like this clipboard or the cover of a notebook or something like that. Um, you can just kind of sit and turn your brain off and, and make this beautiful pattern. Okay, so that is it for our flowers in the background. Now it's time to personalize and add the details to our banner shape. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the outline. Again, really similar to the way we've been doing it. We're gonna start with the inside box, kind of paying attention to where, you know, we have a lot of big open white space here to where these details need to be. So I'm gonna start by doing the line at the top and bottom, just inside the edge, just the way we've been doing it. And again, if your pens are dragging a little, it's possible that your paint is still a little bit wet, so you'll want to make sure that that's fully dry. And then I'm going to do the two edges. I'm just going to connect those to get my rectangle. And then I'm going to do the line going down here, right off the bottom. And then my little flag shape on the edge. Just outline all of that and you've outlined your little banner shape. So for this one, um, I'm gonna give this to my friend Sherry. So I'm gonna write Sherry's name in here, but you know, of course, um, if you're making this, this is a really great um, project for buy and sell season, which is coming up. We've got lots of fall markets and Christmas markets coming up. So you can paint these, you can do a lot of them really quickly with your Let's Meet Live kit, leave them blank and personalize them um, for gifts and um, to sell and things like that. So. Um, you can leave it blank if you don't know who you're going to give it to yet, or you can go ahead and personalize it now with your name or whoever is going to receive it. Um, so feel free to sketch out the letters of the pencil first, um, or if you're comfortable hand lettering, just go right into it. You can just print their name too. Um, you can get, you know, the letter stickers in the scrapbook section or the craft store, whatever you feel comfortable, whichever way you feel comfortable personalizing it. I'm just going to go in with my paint pen though. So I'm going to give it to my friend Sherry. We've got some people impressed with the paint pens. They're pretty cool. Yeah, they're really great. I Like I said, I love a paint pen. I love to doodle. I love to art journal. Um, so when I heard that we were going to be making paint pens, I got super excited, and I was not disappointed. They really are very good quality, um, especially for the price. So make sure to check these out, guys. All of the... Um, supplies we're using here tonight, the brushes, um, the paints, the paint pens can all be purchased on platonline.com. So make sure to go check those out. We're using our Folk Art Matte Acrylic Brushes um, and our Let's Paint Live set. Alrighty. 
So that is it, you guys. Um, that is our back to school clipboard. Um, thanks so much for painting with me. I had so much fun painting with you guys. Again, a great gift for teachers or to make for yourself if you are a teacher. Um, but thanks to all the teachers out there. Like I said, my sister's a teacher and you have very hard jobs. So thanks for what you guys do. Um, you guys are amazing. And I know this is a tough time of year. So thank you again. Um, but again, thanks so much for joining us. We are here every Monday for our paint night live. 